You know, there are many types of lenses out there. The wide-angle lens, the telephoto, the nifty 50 prime. Every lens has its specific job and style. There are some that are a bit more wacky, like the fisheye and the tilt shift lens, but one of the weirdest lenses out there isn't technically a lens. And that's the pinhole lens. It's literally using an arts and craft project as a lens, and the fact that this isn't really a glass lens, but more like a little hole, makes it terrifying and almost dumb in a certain way. So now the question is, why would someone want to use a pinhole lens? The word camera comes from the Latin term camera obscura, which means dark chamber. It derives from a simple 16th century invention of a darkened room with a small hole on one side, through which an image would be projected into a wall on the other side. You can actually do a little science experiment in your room by covering up your windows and leaving a small hole. If done right, you can actually see the outside of your window upside down, projected on your wall. The idea of using a small hole is that it only lets certain light rays through, focusing the light, creating an image. This concept was further developed into the photographic camera that we all know today. Now, although modern lenses have become much more efficient at focusing light on a sensor or film strip, the concept of a pinhole lens is still usable today, and has become kind of like a small little science experiment for photographers. But now the question is, can this still be used as a serious tool? Let me first start off by saying that I first tried by doing the arts and craft project and it did work. I did however have many issues with it. Maybe it was the kind of tape I was using but my specific lens kept closing itself. Maybe I should have watched a tutorial on how to do it properly. But instead I opted by using this professional pinhole by a company that goes by the name of Tignify. So although many of these characteristics will be similar with other self-made pinhole lenses, just note that I'm basing the characteristics of the pinhole lens by this Tignify Pinhole Pro S. A traditional lens will use a glass element to converge light into a sensor, but for it to be nice and sharp, a lens needs to be manually focused for it to make it work. Now, the smaller the opening of a lens, the more things are in focus, but the drawback is that the camera has less light to expose a photo. And so, many photographers enjoy using lower apertures like f1.8 with larger openings for their photography. But here's the thing with a pinhole lens. Instead of using a glass element to converge light to a sensor, it will use a tiny hole that has an aperture equivalent of f256. And so instead of moving the glass element to get things in focus, it will just naturally have everything in focus because the aperture is so small. This means that you don't have to manually focus anything because everything is already kind of in focus. But this also means that with an aperture of f256, you don't have a lot of light coming in. Another issue with such a small aperture is that the dust particles on your sensor are also in focus. This made me realize how dusty my sensor actually is and started making me feel very insecure about it. And so, this creates an image that has no bokeh. This means that everything from focus infinity to macro is already in focus. And so the only thing that a macro tube does is up the focal length of the lens. Another characteristic of this lens is that it is very soft. Even though everything is in focus, it will feel as if everything is slightly out of focus. In the real world, this lens is very challenging to use because the opening of the lens is so small that this leaves us with only two options for getting usable shots. The first is by using a very high ISO. This will create a very noisy photo, but the shutter speed will at least be fast enough to be used handheld. The second option is to use a very long shutter speed. This will require a tripod even during the daytime. Now during nighttime, this is a different story, as you'll need both a long exposure and a high ISO to get photos. In my case, I needed a shutter speed of 30 seconds and an ISO 6400 just to get usable shots at night. Now if you want to do a video with a pinhole lens, then you become very limited. You'll only be able to use it during the daytime, as even with a shutter speed of 1 50th and an ISO of 1 million, my Zcam E2 M4 didn't have enough light to create usable footage indoors. Lastly, when it comes to using this lens in any type of SLR camera, you won't be able to see anything through the viewfinder. If you have a live view feature, then it will help, but if you're using a film camera, then every shot that you'll take will be taken blindly, without you really knowing what your composition is. Although when shooting it with film, you don't need to worry about the dust on your film strip because it changes film every time you shoot a shot. The other thing to take note of when shooting pinhole with film is that you can't use high ISOs with film, so you'll always be shooting with a tripod. 
Okay, so I know I've been describing this lens as an incredibly challenging lens and frankly bad lens, but there are still some places where this lens can excel at. The first is any type of vintage look. Pinhole lenses have a soft look to them that is very reminiscent of the very old times. So if you're trying to replicate 19th century pictures, a pinhole lens is actually a great choice as the technology of pinhole lenses is very similar to what they used in the olden days. Adding black and white is a plus in my opinion and can really add to the image. Now when it comes to video, pinhole lenses are great at creating the Super 8 look. The soft and noisy image makes for a very nostalgic look. Add a couple of overlays and a slight flicker and the footage looks spot on in my opinion. This can be a cheap digital alternative to the real Super 8 that is really expensive. Another place that I found pinhole lenses to be great is in horror. The blurry images creates this mysterious vibe and so any type of creepypasta type images passes super well with pinhole. I think the overall idea is to use everything that is bad about this lens to your advantage. From the high noise to the soft look, pinhole lenses strive at making the mundane look old and mysterious. Pinhole lenses are probably one of the most challenging lenses to use out there, but it's still funny to think how the absolute worst lens can still have its uses when used creatively. Everything that makes this lens bad is also its very strength, and it goes to show how sometimes it's not about having the sharpest image, but having an image that conveys an emotion. Although I wouldn't recommend the pinhole lens as an everyday lens, it's still a lens that has its uses and can be fun to toy around with. So what do you guys think about the pinhole lens? Have you tried making one? Do you think it's stupid? Maybe it's too challenging to use? Leave your thoughts in the comment down below. Kinda wanna know what's your opinion on it.